En 2010, el reconocido microbiólogo australiano Frank Fenner predijo que los seres humanos nos extinguiremos en un plazo de 100 años como consecuencia del calentamiento global. El aumento de las temperaturas sobre 5 grados Celsius provocaría inundaciones, hambrunas, sequías, aumento del nivel del mar, extinción masiva y el posible traspaso al punto de inflexión, punto en el cual el planeta no conseguiría recuperarse y caminaría pasos agigantados al colapso, volviéndose inhabitable y acabando con la gran mayoría de las especies. Tales afirmaciones han inspirado diversas películas de ficción científica, como el reciente éxito de boletería Interestelar, que propone la idea de un planeta prácticamente desierto, explotado al punto de no conseguir mantener la vida. Sin embargo, ¿hasta qué punto llega la ficción, dando lugar a la más cruda realidad? ¿Está el planeta Tierra realmente dirigiéndose al colapso? ¿Cuántas especies de seres vivos dividen o planeta conosco? Só na década de 90, de fato, algumas, final da década de 80, começo da década de 90, do século passado, é que alguns cientistas começaram a se preocupar seriamente com isso, como resultado da taxa acelerada de perda de ambientes e de espécies no nosso planeta. Eu posso dizer que a resposta final ainda está sendo debatida, mas as estimativas que a gente tem hoje e que têm sido seguidas por vários cientistas, põem o um número de espécies de organismos, então inclui tudo, bactérias, plantas, animais, fungos, algas, tudo, né? todos os seres vivos, estou falando da vida na Terra. Essas estimativas vão de 5 a 10 milhões. 5 a 10 milhões de espécies seria a diversidade da vida na Terra hoje. Todos os seres vivos são interrelacionados, e esse é o aspecto ecológico que é importante para ser mantido, porque uma vez rompido esse, esse equilíbrio ecológico, haverá sempre uh, malefícios que vão resultar disso. When one looks at the habitats around us, when one looks at the interactions, for instance, of, of my research organisms, sea turtles, and their marine habitats, it's very obvious that that these are finely balanced. That when we as humans have an impact that offsets that balance, there are continually ripple effects, or continuing ripple effect, effects. And those then end up throwing systems out of balance, which we can see impacts life around us. And in many cases, that ends up by reducing biodiversity rather than increasing biodiversity. When we reduce biodiversity, um, we have other spillover effects on that impacts, on those impacts of, uh, on biodiversity. And uh, we don't know if those are going to be good or bad. But in most cases, our research does demonstrate that those impacts uh, in reducing biodiversity are not going to be good. Uh, they have impacts on the rest of the system as well as impacts on us as humans. Are we threatening our own existence? Well, I think in a sense we may be. Uh, one reason for thinking that we are threatening our own existence is by looking at how our activities influence other organisms. Look at the species around us. Look at what we're doing to the to the fish, look at what's happening to the soil, to the water, to the, to the uh, habitats, the, uh, the plant, the plant communities. Um, we're, we're, we are no longer in a position where, there, where the productivity of the environment exceeds the rate at which we're harvesting it. 
It used to be we could cut a tree down and well, another one would grow up before too long. But now we're cutting them all down and they're, they're not growing uh, that fast. And so the total amount of forested area is each year gets a little less, a little less, and we can see in the future we're going to run out. And uh, the same with other resources. And so, you know, what's, what are we going to do about this? We have evidence in science, in, in biological research, of many organisms who have either uh, been reduced in the numbers, in their population numbers, or have actually gone extinct. Some of the organisms that I work on, uh, marine sea turtles, uh, have been negatively impacted by things like pollution, uh, fishing nets, uh, the direct take and removal of sea turtle eggs from uh, nesting beaches, uh, turtles being caught in fishing nets or being captured for consumption. And many of these influences have brought populations down to levels that are uh, critically endangered, almost extinct. So for instance, the hawksbill turtle, Arete mochelis imbricata, this turtle has been captured for centuries for its colorful shell. And they take that shell and make jewelry. Uh, they make uh, various kinds of artifacts out of that uh, shell structure. And because of this uh, and the additional influences of pollution and fishing nets and changes in habitat, changes in global climate, uh, that has brought the population of these particular uh, species, this particular species, uh, very close to the brink of, uh, of extinction. And we've come to understand uh, some, uh, a little more about our, our, uh, the results of our activities. You know, 500 years ago, there was not so many people and, and there were lots of areas of the world where you could just kind of settle in and, and even perhaps nobody lived there. You could claim the land for yourself. This is my land because nobody else has, has it. But that's not really the case anymore. The population has grown and, uh, and the, um, the technology has produced a lot of changes in materials so that when we, when we uh, mine copper, we, we concentrate it in some places, we may use some kind of chemicals to process it, uh, we dig holes and destroy areas of the world, uh, of the surface, and we, the, uh, the parts of the copper mine where the amount of copper is too low to make it commercially um, viable, we put in a big pile, and then that pile has a higher concentration of copper than most organisms are used to. And, and we can multiply the examples. Uh, petroleum, uh, logging for a forest, and the generation of trash and plastic bottles, and all of these things are influencing and affecting the, uh, the environment in which we live. And, uh, you know, what, what should we be doing about that? It's very true that we have scientific evidence that humankind has really impacted the environment, the world around us, in a, in a global way. We find that since industrialization, that period of industrialization, we have strongly influenced habitats. And it's well known in science. Uh, and there's plenty of evidence that humans are impacting biodiversity in a, in a strong way. We have uh, extinction rates that are increasing because of human interactions with our habitats. There is discussion and uh, some contention about global climate change. And these are issues that impact us not only immediately here and now, but are beginning to be recognized for their future impacts as well. And one of those impacts, of course, is, is the uh, global climate. 
which we have concerns about for various habitats, for organisms that are at the brink of extinction, uh, what will happen with their behaviors, what will happen with their reproduction. These are questions we really can't answer from this side of those changes. But we can make assumptions, we can hypothesize, we can do research to test the potential influences of global climate change. And what we're finding when we do those kinds of tests is that those changes in climate, which are happening possibly more rapidly than we really understand and recognize, will certainly have impacts not only on animals and on uh, ecosystems, but those will reflect in, uh, in potential impacts on human life and humankind as well. Então, qual a relevância da gente conhecer essa diversidade da vida na Terra? Em primeiro lugar, o que está sendo perdido em que taxa e a gente nem conhece? Né? Se a gente não chega a conhecer nem metade das espécies que existem, os outros dois terços, três quartos que a gente não conhece, qual a importância deles para o planeta fu funcionar como ele funciona hoje? Isso significa o quê? Manter condições para a vida do ser humano, e, na verdade, para a vida na Terra. Né? Então, a grande preocupação dos cientistas é isso. Um planeta que pode ter mais de 10 milhões de espécies e que ele funciona em equilíbrio, é um sistema em equilíbrio, e esse equilíbrio significa que ele mantém condições para a vida na Terra existir, isso quer dizer que a gente tem ar respirável, água limpa, né? é um clima relativamente ameno. Então, esse equilíbrio é dado pelas 10 milhões de espécies. Com perda de diversidade, o que pode acontecer com esse equilíbrio? Esse é o grande medo que os pesquisadores têm hoje, porque a gente não tem uma resposta. E se chegar num nível em que a gente vai perder espécies, né, numa taxa tal que esse equilíbrio não possa ser mais mantido, não há dinheiro ou ciência hoje que seja possível para consertar. A gente não sabe como arrumar um planeta. A gente só sabe viver no que a gente tem. La Plataforma Intergubernamental de Ciencia en Biodiversidad y Ecosistemas calcula que de todas las especies conocidas mayores que una bacteria, cada año desaparecen 100 especies por cada 10 millones. Esto significa que están siendo extintas mil veces más rápido que en cualquier otro momento de la historia de la Tierra, aún en las áreas protegidas. Esta abismal extinción de especies se debe en gran parte a la acción del hombre. La deforestación ha provocado la desaparición de diversos ecosistemas que a su vez juegan un papel decisivo en la regulación del cambio climático.